Okay, this is what happens. So you get 80% evidence on something, you keep going down 80%, 80%, 80%. Finally, it is only 21%. Okay, the BMJ, he was talking about the guidelines, nice guidelines. They are so poorly done, I'm ashamed to say that even a medical student can do a better job. Their little search criteria, everything was so awful. So these are all the commentaries they wrote in British Medical Journal. Goes on. Now we'll talk about just a little bit. Leclerc, they said there were no major issues. Do you know that they withdrew that article? They apologized for their presentation and they said that should not be used for any purposes. The NATH article, this patients in the active treatment group had more pain, 1.6 points, than the other group. But this is the randomization. What can they do for that? And they had 1.5 points for leg pain reduction, but that is compared to placebo, not to the baseline. They did have significant reduction for back pain. I don't know why Dr. Chow got that, but... Uh, but you are comparing the... Ba you, sh you should take the baseline rather than from the two groups. If you go further down, this taken, he did use uh, diagnostic criteria, the 50% relief with a single block. Their reduction was actually in the conventional radio frequency group. It was 6.4 was the median pre-op pre or pre-procedure. Then it was 2.4 at the end. Now, the difference they are looking at here is the local anesthetic block, every patient who had the needles also had the local anesthetic block. So that is not really placebo. So you can't look the differences between that group, this group, and say that that is not valid. They did have significant improvement. I'm not supporting this study. Actually, this was not even included by Dr. Datta. They excluded this study from their review. Okay, they had a lot of technical issues. So there are many studies and we have all this information, but we are saying they have not been looked at properly and they can be changed. The clinicians have to be involved, people who do understand the procedures. And this example he was showing uh, therapeutic impact. We have studied these patient outcomes, have been studied, we have the literature on that. When we looked at this, our own study, the sensitivity is 100%, specificity is 69.5%, accuracy is 78%. We also looked at their long-term follow-up, how these patients respond. When they have two-year follow-up after 80% pain relief, 90% of them still had sustained facet joint diagnosis. That shows the accuracy. Then finally about ASA guidelines. The authors are, this is very interesting, Rosenquist is the primary author, and one of the authors is this Korovar. She will, she's also an author of ACOM guidelines. There's no correlation at all, ACOM guidelines to ASA guidelines. But they come up with strong evidence for radio frequency for lumbar, cervical A3 strong recommendation. How the press deals with this, there was a cognitive behavioral treatment for low back pain article recently in Lancet. I happened to write a commentary on that article actually. But when it came in the press, Nobody talked to me, they talked to Dr. Charles. <laughs> Do the new studies of Curry going to end the discography? They talk everything about Curry's articles. 
There are lots of articles written by Rick Darby. My friend Rick is not here, but Aaron Kalardney probably can do this job better than I'm doing. They didn't mention any of the studies contradicting Karaji's studies. So it is all how you present. Well, thank you. <laughs>